Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel y'all. It's so good to have you guys back. I hope you guys are feeling well. I hope you guys are feeling fantastic. I do want to go ahead and express my deep gratitude for all of you who have made it here on my channel. For all of you who have taken the time to donate to my channel and all of you who have been incredibly supportive and for all of your kind and loving words for all of your gestures and wow i feel i just feel really grateful to have you here with me today okay and um as we flow through the week i hope you guys are able to you know really think about where we are. I do want to make a video based off of mindset and COVID. Okay. I know some of my subscribers have talked about it, but I think it's really important that we uh, maybe try to bring some uplifting energy when it comes to this time. I know a lot of us are a little bit, um, it's kind of like we're struggling with the mindset. Okay. Um, and I really want to bring my own I want to bring my own light, my own experience to the table um, of how this time has kind of changed for me. Um, we'll save it for a toddy video. Excuse me, you guys, I have allergies, so if you hear me kind of nasally, that's why. Um, but yes, let's go ahead. Let's bring our heart space into this. And I do, listen, you guys, I am incredibly, I am incredibly grateful and so happy to see all of you guys bring such a loving, compassionate, um, very uh, humanitarian connection to each other here on the channel because that is ultimately my aim and my goal is to make sure that once a week we are holding space for someone we do not know. Um, I, I really, this is really important. Okay, this is something that's really important to me. The collaborations, the, you know, all the extra, that's, that's kind of on the wayside. You know, what I want to see is humanity here. I want to see humanity and I want to see compassion. I want to see that we all can, can be kind. And with that being said, judgment does not live here. <laughs> okay, uh, judgment does not live here. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out. Um, and I want to make sure we are all feeling safe here in this space where we all feel, you know, um, loved. Yeah, it's priceless. So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and do a pick a card based off of singles. So let's go ahead and get all this beautiful energy, how to manifest it you know, what's coming up for you as a single individual here in love in the near future. Yeah, perfect. And if you guys are, um, you know, feeling generous and would like to donate, I do have my cash app below. I have my Indie Deck wish list. I have my Amazon wish list and I have my PayPal. Okay. So, If you are new to my channel, I am a psychic medium. Welcome in, get comfortable, get your tea, let's get shoddy. And um, I do read tarot intuitively. I also have recently started painting intuitively and I'm really excited to share that part of myself with you. And also um, I do mediumship as well. I have all of that information down below if you guys are interested. And yeah, please, you guys, don't forget to comment, like, share. If you watch me, you know, do some energy work through my videos, please don't worry. This is all about healing as I move through this journey with you. And I'm really excited to do so. So we are going to go ahead and see what's the tea, who's coming towards you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So. Hmm. Huh. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's do this. Okay, so the first pile is the Star Seeker Tarot. The second pile is the Modern Witch Tarot. 
The third is the Sun Moon Tarot. So think about your love life as a single. Well, let's talk about manifesting it. Let's talk about what's going on, how we can, you know, raise the vibration in your life. Without our heart, you guys, we are nothing, let me tell you. Okay. Let's do this. So, pile one, shall we? So, pile one. Okay, there's a lot of beautiful energy moving right now. I am having a vision of a lot of golds in your life, okay? So, when I think about gold, I think about um, the masculine. I think about you know, a determined energy. I think about royalty. I think about abundance. So I am having a vision here of, you know, that saying, dripped in gold. I think there's a song, something about uh, dripped in gold here. There's a lot of potential for self-mastery, pile one. Wow, look at this. Archangel, invoke the art excuse me, the guardians. This is really interesting because this is the vision that I had of the color here, this beautiful, beautiful golden orb. A lot of you guys are rebuilding something right now. You're rebuilding a beautiful boat. It looks like a boat. And symbolically, when I think about a boat, I think about movements. I think about travel, I think about spiritual travel, you know, getting from point A to B, something that helps you expand, right? Right now, you are rebuilding your state of mind, you're rebuilding your, your consciousness, your ability to feel free in your environment. So archangels, so this is about your faith, this is about your spirituality, this is about connecting to our creator, to our divine purpose as we move through this expansion. A lot of you, I am having a vision also of like this beautiful thread with a lot of, uh, it's like they look like orbs, um, but also they look like pearls. So there's a very karmic lesson in your life right now and your angels are guiding you through it and they want you to hold an enormous amount of room for your healing right now. This is a good time as you are rebuilding to start putting back the pieces with intention, pile one, because this is your time. For instance, I remember um, I go to a specific reader sometimes, someone that I really enjoy talking to. And, you know, what I love is that she always gives me just enough. She never tells me exactly what because I like to figure it out on my own. You know, she knows I'm a reader, so we kind of have a flow. And she knows I don't like too much. Um, she just gives me just enough so I can piece it together, right? And I remember I told her, I said, you know what? I'm feeling really stagnant with my creativity. So can you channel something for me? And that same morning, I had just painted a beautiful piece of angel wings. That same morning. And we spoke and she said, you know, I channeled angel wings. So I'm going to let you kind of piece it together. And it was like, boom, epiphany, right? My connection to God, my connection to the universe, to the creator. This is where you guys are. You guys are, are, are it's like you're piecing something together that can be incredibly healing, but it's also you're mastering 
how you move in your relationships, the movement, the actual experience. It's not just about us connecting with people. I know a lot of the time um, our experiences can feel very fast, very uh, short term, sometimes long term. But one of the reasons why I believe in conserving energy and not really speaking too much, or I really believe in, in a Japanese style or a very um, Southeast Asian style of living because something I've learned through my practice of meditation, I'm getting into um, Tai Chi, okay, like little bits of Tai Chi here and there, and there's a preservation of prana, right, of your life force. So often I really believe in, in silence in some ways because that is how you, you conserve your energy, especially if you're moving through a tough time where you need a lot of inner light, right? It doesn't mean isolation, but it means you know what you need. And sometimes solitude, that's why they have silent meditations, because you get so much out of just letting go of control you get so much out of um, letting go of the need to connect with someone every day. It's like we're so obsessed with having to connect with someone or something or the idea that we need to be married by now, the idea where there's such a, there's such a rush, right? What happens here, and this is in alignment with your reading, is that we are forgetting about our spirit because we're so rushed to either, you know, have a very intimate connection, a very instant connection, a very low vibrational connection, that we're missing the actual experience of the human touch, right? Or the human experience of exchanging love. I don't believe it's for everyone, you know? I believe in celibacy. Call me traditional. I don't know. I believe that there is no need to share your, your sexual energy with others um, unless it's going to be sacred because this is how we also invite things that are not so, you know? So I think what I'm feeling here is I'm saying this for a reason, Pal One, because you guys are really moving through a, a stage of you know, establishing new order in your life, a brand new foundation where you're bringing in more light in matters of love. You are no longer treating it as a one night stand or you're no longer treating it as something casual. And again, this is my own perspective. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, what feels right for you. I just know, look at this, shape shift. What I do know here is who you're becoming is going to, your love pile one moves people. It's not just love, it's a movement. There's a movement here. I'm getting a lot of Gemini energy. I'm getting some Libra energy, Piscean energy, Leo. There's a lot of shape shifting. So some of you guys in the past, you have had to kind of mold yourself into people or, you know, you, you've, you've kind of had separate identities that are no longer fitting for you. And right now you are becoming more of who you're supposed to be. And what I see here is, you know, you're making a thread and this thread is really important because it's, it's connecting you to your future. This thread here is about a legacy. This thread is about your long-term potential and love, right? So we do have deep perspective. I'm telling you, we cannot make this up. This is grounding. This is a movement. This is incredibly expensive for you. This is, you. what you guys are doing, my loves, it's not just about um, rebuilding this beautiful boat. It's about healing your lineage, your ancestors, your DNA, you know, deprogramming experiences and becoming more there's this spiritual inner wealth that you're experiencing here 
And what I feel is that some of you guys had your, your hopes up high with somebody. Maybe you just traveled. I am getting maybe some movement around travel. And there's a realization that maybe this connection was far from what you wanted. Empty. But there's still gold. All I keep seeing is gold all around you. Abundance. Growth. Act now. So it's almost like your guides right now, they're really encouraging some healing. So the water elements, your intuition, practicing a lot of your emotional flexibility, becoming more, um, being okay with being in a flow, okay? The last six years of your experience in love have been incredibly karmic. So I am getting a lot of karma here, working through karmic contracts with your beloved. So there's a lot of self-love activity here. And the reason why your angels are present invoking the guardians is because some of you guys may have lost some of your light during this process. Maybe you're feeling super frustrated. Okay, maybe you're feeling incredibly frustrated about, you know, why is love not happening? Why is it not unfolding? Um... Just, you know, I'm, I'm throwing in my two cents nowadays, a little extra. <laughs> when we move slow, when we're able to look at our, our beloved from a place of, it took me several years in therapy to get this right, let me tell you. Um, when we're able to move with precision, we're able to move slow, we can look at our relationships as a potential evolution of growth and we're not clinging to this idealism of who they can be to fill a void this is when you have reached your self-mastery so you're you're wearing different hats right now power one in order to find your purpose and love so what i see here exactly look at this i can't make this up authentic truth Okay, so what you're doing is, I'm telling you, look at this, you guys, expansion. It's like you're doing everything your grandmother didn't do, you're doing everything your grandfather didn't do, you're bringing a wave of new energy and, you know, the water, right? A lot of the time, you know, we fear the water because... Once you're out there in the sea, once you're out there in the ocean, and you're far off, you're in the middle. You're in the middle of the waves. You're in the middle of this movement. It's kind of like when we get really emotional and we're like, oh my gosh, are the tears going to ever stop? So this is what love feels like for you. It's a movement. And it's terrifying. This is why we sabotage love so much. It's terrifying. Why do we love people that do not love us? Because it's easier to try to use our ego to win love versus accepting being loved. Right? This is deep. What you guys are going through, it feels incredibly uh, moving. And um, I hope you are still holding faith for love because I know matters of the heart can be so it can it can really destroy our spirit this is why i always encourage heart felt activity making sure that we are moving through our heart space okay because once we lose our empathy once we lose our our heart we are losing our spirit and this is what i see happening we're losing our spirit of humanity and this isn't just going to be about love, my loves, okay? This is going to be overall because once we are able to receive love from a genuine place, from another human being, we are able to connect back into the world and we are able to share it with other people who we, you know, we, we might deem as undeserving, right? So it's a domino effect, yeah? So let's talk about it. Let's see what's going on. Singles and love. So what I see here, a lot of purples, a lot of intuition being activated, a lot of crown chakra. I'm seeing a lot of um, a 
Hmm. Some of you guys are um, taking a look at this energy here. I'm having a vision when I look at this card. Some of you are working through some of your soul star energies. So this is like you're working through your past life, like trauma. Like there's a lot of unspoken words silencing around your, your masculine or, you know, you have been through a lot. There's been a lot of betrayal. And when we incarnate with a lot of trauma, you know, our spirit, we are looking to heal with each other, right? So we are working through different, different modalities of healing with each other. It could be even rebelling against love. It could be closing our heart. It could look so, it, it just looks different for, for each and one of us, right? I want you to really take in who you are without shame. There's something about shame, you guys. I'm feeling some shame here. And I want you to release it. Okay, there's no right or wrong way to do it. And sometimes we have to make mistakes in order to learn. Sometimes we push people away in order to learn and vice versa, but we are teaching each other. So what we have in love here, we have the Eight of Swords. So let's take a look. Okay, so right now you guys are maybe in a position of maybe mental, like there's some paralysis around love like you're mentally trapping yourself in this idea that you are not worthy you're mentally trapping yourself in some kind of cycle of um, imprisonment okay this comes along with heavy trauma okay this is where we see people who have experienced some serious serious trauma of all forms there's a, a tendency to you know, believe a lot of negative patterns. The number eight representing your spiritual ascension, but also death and rebirth in Pluto. Wherever we have Pluto, we have some deep, 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 deep underground wounds, okay? So Scorpio, Scorpio doesn't just exist. The sign of Scorpio is several experiences in one we have the phoenix we have the serpent and we have the owl different transformations different stages so when we have the eighth house we have you know saturn we have the influence of saturn we have the lord of karma but i also feel this is about releasing this imprisonment okay right now you guys are not feeling good about your self-esteem we have the eight of cups again the number eight the influence again walking away from your past you know what i have going on in my vision here a lot of rebuilding the boat okay rebuilding re you know you're carving out your own way for love So we have the moon, right? I love the moon for many reasons, but one of them where you are right now in matters as a single in love, what you're doing is you're mastering the womb, what I call the womb, right? And, and the way you're mastering this is you are closing your eyes and you're saying, I cannot see. You're closing your eyes and you're saying, I cannot see. All I could see is the dark. All I could see is the vast emptiness. Like, this is it. This is all I can see. And this is where you start to create. And this is where you release your fear. Because when you cannot see your destination, the moon, it, it can actually, you know, in some cases, the moon makes you feel a little crazy. It has that effect on you. Sometimes the moon can even talk about psychological disorders, right? It could talk about uh, paranoia, extreme paranoia, extreme trauma within the mother. So there's some trauma here with the mom, the mama. This is where we are projecting, okay? This is where we are kind of combining fear of the dark. So right now you're saying, okay, I'm going to just close my eyes and I'm going to see where this boat takes me. I'm gonna illuminate my fears. Right now, there's a lot of hidden influences. Some of you guys have not dealt with some of your stuff. And I, I don't want, you know, the thing, 
the thing about trauma, you guys, especially in love, is that there's so much shame. It's like, you don't know how many times my friends, you know, have expressed, well, I don't know where to start. A lot of us don't. And that's okay. Right? So, I feel like you guys are in this space right now. But I want you to know that in love, you're working through it because a lot of you are taking this initiative and you're saying, I cannot see my destination, but I'm just going to close my eyes and I'm going to let the waves just kind of take me, right? And I'll reach, I'll reach shore. This is the end goal, reaching shore. So let's see who's coming in for you, single. So March. There's going to be, be it, it's, there's an illumination here of I've made it, March. There's room for someone new. I'm getting a Leo Saj Aries, someone who's incredibly charismatic, someone who's loving. The person that you are going to connect with in March is going to challenge you mentally in the best ways because they're not going to let you minimize yourself and they're, they're not going to let you dim your light and they're going to expect you to be just as independent as they are. So this is going to be an experience for you. With a lot of 8th house activity, some of you guys may have had a past life where there's codependency and you're now moving into a current life where you are going to be more um, empowered. You're going to be okay with being on your own. Okay? So what's coming in? We have seven of pentacles. The pentacle energy, the earth energy, the grounding energy, this is one of my favorite energies because I am far from grounded. <laughs> so what I see here for you is there's going to be some serious work being done in terms of bringing what it is that you truly desire onto the earth plane. You guys are manifesting this and you're, you're watering it. You're doing the work. Right? You're going to do this specifically with this person that's coming into your life, but it's going to be an individual process, individualized work. So some of you are working on, um, there's going to be some serious movement around your career. I'm getting a lot of flow around your career, abundance around your career, and you're going to feel almost as if, am I ready for love right now? It feels a little um, suffocating. So you're going to have to learn how to balance your own defense mechanisms around worth. So for me, the Eight of Swords for you is not so much about, oh, I'm feeling lack. It's, it's more I'm used to abandoning situations when they get hard. This is going to be your, your uh, challenge that you're working through. How do you step up and not walk away when things get hard in your life, right? Okay. So who's coming in for love? I am having a vision of a lot of leaves flowing around you, so it almost feels like autumn, but it's, you know, not really autumn. But um, it's like a release, a release of the past, a release of the old version of you. And here we have the Three of Cups. So this person is going to be a friend. There's going to be a lot of building, a lot of growing with each other. And... They are not going to want to rush this because you're dealing with someone who come, you know, they've just come out of something very heavy in their life. It could be a divorce. It could be whatever. And they're going to show you how to be a friend first or vice versa. But what I see is this person is going to help you sign contracts to help you build wealth. There's going to be mutual admiration who's coming in for you. There's going to be a distance here. This person has a lot of um, status. They're going to help you level up in life, especially financially. The number nine here, wisdom, enlightenment. Wow, you guys, this isn't... Who are you guys going to be dating? Oh my God, this sounds really exciting. 
So we have someone in, either in the military or they have a military background or they're a police officer or they're doing something in life that is going to require a lot of movement, but they have authority. And what they want to show you is that you are more than worthy of love. You are definitely worthy, but they're going to do this with confidence. So you know how some people come into our lives and we, we what I call, try them and they're like, no. They show you their boundaries. This is my boundary. No. Right? Those are good people to keep around. Those are the people you want in your life. The people, your lovers, your friends, the people who cannot respect your boundaries are not people you want in your life. If you say no and someone has a problem with that, those are not your people. What's your advice for manifesting? Get clear. Get clear on what you want. The Ace of Swords. Get clear on what you want out of love. How can you manifest new love here with the Two of Wands? We have the Knight of Wands in reverse. We have the Two of Wands, the Ace of Swords. Okay. Wow. Wow. This is all about manifesting. I want you guys to write it down. What do you want in a partner? I want dot, dot, dot. I am worthy of dot, dot, dot. Use the fire element and the air, you guys. This is about being very clear about what it is that you want. Okay? This is beautiful energy. Okay, let's keep going, you guys. Well, that was a, that was a long one. All right. Let's go. Okay. Let's go ahead and do pile two singles and love, shall we? Wow. Okay, you guys. I want you guys, if you guys are thinking about manifesting new love, I want you guys to start planting um, your intentions on Saturday. Saturday is coming up as a very important day for you. Okay, and I want you to start using red and pink roses in a ritual, or it could be a bath ritual, you guys, like purifying your spirit, okay, letting go of what's been burdening you, but roses are going to help you heal. As you see right there, I love roses. I use them for meditation. I use them to, you know, um, create a sacred space where I can open my heart chakra. This is where you guys are, so we have a deep perspective in love. Some of you have, you know, there's a deep wound around abandonment that's coming up for me right now that I'm having a vision of. So the thought of people leaving you really creates anxiety. So I want you to kind of get grounded on this. I want you to connect with Gaia because when your root chakra, your, your connection to the earth is not present, um, there's a tendency to live in a lack of fear of, oh my God, you're going to leave me. Oh my God, you don't want me. Oh my God, you know. And when we date this way, people can feel that energy. So pile two. Oh, okay. Indulgence. What's going on in matters of love for you? Mm-hmm. Pile two, inner flow and cycle. Okay. Okay, pile two. You know, I'm having a vision that you're wearing all black here. A lot of you guys are mourning something. There's a lot of grieving. So someone may have walked away from you. There's someone in the past. This could be a twin flame that you are in separation and there's been a lot of pain around this separation. So I am getting, there's been some heaviness on your path here. Okay, pile two. And you're rediscovering a different part of yourself. 
what I feel, a lot of you right now in matters of love, you're trying to find your momentum. You're trying to find your speed. A lot of you have a strong connection to horses. Um, the horse totem is coming up for you. Gentle love in reverse. It's almost like I'm getting, I don't know what love is anymore, or I don't know what gentle love is, or I don't know, you know, maybe you guys have never been loved in, in a way where there's reciprocity. Okay? I want you to connect with images of the horse, connect with horses, pet them, connect with them, look them in the eyes, because they have a special message for you. The horse totem here is about, I mean, they're very sacred. They're very intuitive creatures, right? I love animals. Animals have saved my life. I know that sounds crazy, but it's like they're, they're, they're the most sacred on this earth, just like humans, but they are, they're elite in my eyes. precious they're precious they're they're guides okay so the horse is teaching you a lot about endurance and a lot about resiliency right now in matters of your heart okay so i do feel there's an ax you're still holding on to or there's a past connection i'm having a vision of like this uh, a thread that's kind of looks like a like it's torn right there's something that's been torn here relationships in reverse you're coming out of a relationship exactly some of you have gifted this person the gift of your identity and that this is why it's so painful and why is it a gift because no one should have access to you like this okay but this is a big learning experience very big and when I see here for you, my love's pal too, love for you is going to really revolve around some Uranian influence, which is um, stepping outside of the box. So you're not doing traditional things. Tradition will not be your thing. So a lot of you are Aquarian energy. Tradition is not going to be for you. So this means, you know, um, being open with your sexuality or you're not going to be in a traditional mindset or uh, polyamorous connections or you know it could be several things right but it could be uh you know that marriage won't be your thing or whatever right but uranus also encourages creative creative approach like a creative approach to love right stepping out the box not being so uh narrow or rigid about love saying okay well Maybe I can try this, or maybe I can try that. This is what you guys are going to be doing. You're discovering a different version of yourself as you date, okay? It's going to be really profound. It's a movement in itself. So let's take a look. What's going on in love for you, singles? Okay, um, my spirit guides are showing me a vision of family dynamics here, you guys. I really want you to, before you pursue love again, I want you to um, take this into account. And the reason why is this is becoming a, a state of paralysis for you in your relationships. You are projecting something here and it's causing disappointment and a lot of pain in your heart. So my guides are showing me it's important to release some kind of expectation with your father here specifically, more, most importantly, the masculine. What kind of expectation did you have for your father that wasn't met for you, right? This is what is going to help heal. So look at this, the Ace of Wands, right? The Ace of Wands encourages passion, growth. There's a very, very ignited energy after the storm, excuse me. You see how there's clouds here? So this is after the storm. You're coming out and you're saying, I'm ready to date. I'm ready to become brand new. You're ready to start manifesting new love. The sun represents, you know, that masculine, very charged energy. You're feeling very sparked. Okay? So here, I want you to understand, though, in the hidden with this ten of swords in reverse, the clouds here, this represents your family. This is about your dynamic. We, we cannot leap over that and expect to have a healthy, balanced connection to people if we're not constantly reflecting about how we're presenting ourselves. How are we expecting people to love us? 
sometimes it's not coming from a healed place. And if this isn't you, this is going to be the person that you're dealing with, okay? I'm getting some strong Scorpio energy. We have Leo, Sag, Aries. Um, February. So if you haven't watched my February pick a card, I feel February is going to be on and popping for you. Instant love. But more, it's going to be more of an instant um, invitation to new new life, new order, new new relationships, new connections, where you get a chance to practice, okay? Kind of like that Pavana quote, quote you guys, you know I, I outdo this all the time because I love her, her poetry. Her poetry moves me. I will cry to her poetry because it is so, so deep. Um, but, you know, something along the lines of growing, right, where they left you, like when someone just kind of leaves you out in the cold and they throw you out like you're, you're nothing and you grow from that. This is where you guys are. You're growing. You're ready. I feel it. I feel charged. Do you? I feel that. Wow. Okay, so let's go. So what's going on for you, my singles? We have an offer of love coming in from, yes, lots of water. I did feel the Scorpio, so this person is going to be a little bit on the younger side. I am getting someone who is kind of orbiting your environment, a network of friends, someone who's a friend of a friend. I'm getting a lot of like, can you call me? A lot of exciting, you know, news, a lot of chatting, okay, maybe some deep conversation here. And then we have strength. Wow, what's coming in love for you? Hmm. Some of you guys, um, <laughs> there's a lot of activity. This person is going to try really hard with you. They are not going to hesitate. There's going to be a lot of, I'm, I'm, I want you. I'm charging. I'm charging to come get you because you're who I want. Okay. I have to say the feminine here, if you're a Leo, you're like, mm, let me think twice about that. Do I really want that? Mm, right? Strength. This relationship is going to require some flexibility, but a lot of self-control as well. You have someone coming in who's really focused on, um, what can I get out of this physically? And someone who, although there's maybe some passion, it's too focused on the physicality. And my feminines, you, you've outgrown that. You're like, listen, I've gone through several battle, battle scars here. Lupe Fiasco. This is where you guys are. You're like, I want the real deal. I want to be treated well. Right? Or nothing at all. So slow and steady. This connection is going to help both of you, but most importantly, you're going to be in a great place when this person arrives. You're, you're coming out of a really, really dark time, but you're going to be in such a great place by the time this person comes around. You're going to feel very independent. You're very headstrong. This person is not going to quit. They're going to come after you. They're going to really come after you. This person is not going to say that. It's like I'm getting someone who's going to try again and again and again. Kind of like that kind of love where someone comes back and they're in front of your window and they're like, okay, well, what about tonight? You want to hang out? <laughs> wow. Okay, you guys. So let's go out and see what else. Singles in love, pile two. Oh my goodness. This person is really going to make you work. I mean, they're going to make you work because some of you are just going to be in a different place. Maybe I'm getting a lot of um, block throat chakra. Maybe you have a hard time being vulnerable. And it's like you're healing. You guys, no doubt about this. We have two sets. Look at this, you guys. My loves. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Everything is fine. And we have the Ten of Swords in reverse. So talk about healing. You guys are really in this, I'm done with love, but right when we are done with love, that's when we are blessed with something very inspiring. The Ace of Wands, an inspiration, creative spark. 
This person's going to offer a travel situation. They're going to want to travel with you. So just a heads up in the spring. They want, they're going to want to take you out on a date. It's like they want to wine and dine you. They want to do it real big. Excuse me, real big. Because a lot of you guys are like this. Mm, let me think about it. This is going to help you guys open your hearts. Because the challenge here is opening your heart. Okay? So, let's go ahead and see. Singles in love. So, how to manifest it. Let's talk. I think, honestly, what I'm getting here, okay? There's a lot of closed off energy around your ascending heart, releasing resentment. Some of you guys ran away from home, or I'm getting a lot of disconnecting from home at a young age. Okay, I'm picking up a lot of a disconnection to your kin, to your family. This is what's causing blockages in your love life because if you do not trust your environment, there's constant fear, right? We can't trust other people if we're not trusting ourselves. Trust me, I know it very well. I know it. Okay, so what is your advice and love? Let's see. So we do have the Three of Pentacles down here that does not want to um, make it to the top here. Your advice is to uh, date, you guys. Perfect it. Perfect dating. See what you, you like. Write a list. This is about manifesting through art, too. So if you're interested in art, maybe do a painting of the colors that you want to see in your love life. Um, you know, you can use the chakra system. You can manifest through visualization. Yes, visualize. You guys are great at visualization with that ace of wands. So if your person has not arrived yet, your person will definitely arrive, arrive around the summer. I am getting a long-term engagement during the summertime. But if you want to manifest it sooner, you're going to have to visualize. A lot of, use a lot of colors, you guys. Use a lot of paints, okay? Or write out a list. You guys are my, my list people for manifesting. So, oh my gosh. Yes, it's beautiful. I love you. I just felt the need to say that. Okay, you'll get through it, I promise. Let's talk about it. Pile three. Singles and love for power three. Okay. Let's talk about it. So there's an exploration of your identity right now, which I think is fantastic. Some of you guys are... Um, Maybe you've been traveling a little bit more or you're going to feel inclined to date different kind of people. Maybe um, move outside of your, your, um, your comfort zone, okay? Um, I am having a vision of a lot of movement, so there's a lot of sacral chakra activities. So you're really focusing on joy. As we move forward in love for my singles, you're focusing on joy and the joy of dating, okay? We do have ground thyself in reverse. So this is about, it's like you're, you're really approaching love with the feel-good senses, the emotional senses. Your empathy is really active here, okay? So we have a sweet surrender. Mm -hmm. Speak the truth at all times. Some of you were either engaged or married um, either two years ago. I'm getting the number two. Someone, you know, that was very important to you, a soulmate, or this was about two months ago. I'm getting a separation that separated a huge part of your identity. And now there's this emptiness that you guys are trying to fill with several different activities. Um, I am sensing it's like there's an exploration. I'm getting a lot of travel here, okay? Some of you, within your relationships of connecting with different people from, you know, different places, you're really growing um, your, your public energy, so your 10th house activity. So who you are becoming in terms of your power in this community. 
this is about dating others who are going to elevate you in life. This all started with a karmic situation that did not work out, and now you are starting to shift your perspective. What, do, what is it that I re really want in love? You know, it's like maybe finances are really important in matters of love, who you're dating, who you're connecting to. Are they good enough for me? So there's a lot of that. So we have solitude and diligence, and we have spiritual empathy. Okay, you've moved through some serious obstacles, pile three. Some of you focused on money too much. Maybe there was too much of a fixation on status. And now you're becoming more aware that, you know what, having someone that I really care about, having someone that I'm very proud of is more important than a millionaire, okay? Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. There's a preference here, there's a preference. We are not here to shame. But you chose the sun and moon tarot for a reason because these are beautiful, beautiful people. They're very small and very big worlds, right? So you're changing. It's like maybe, you know, right now as a single, you're transforming um, what it is that you believe love should be. Maybe there was too much of a focus on the bad boys or... The, the women who, who couldn't, you know, make room for you or, you know. Some of you guys are not used to being alone. This is what I'm getting. There's been some codependency, okay? Pal 3, and right now you are starting to learn how capable you are and how in love you are with yourself in your journey. Pal 3. So we have whispers and love. Look at that. Wow. Okay. We have color. Hmm. So Your spirit guides, they have been trying to help you change patterns in love, okay? They're trying to help you kind of move away from egoic pursuits, and they really want you to see um, a different version of yourself in matters of love. It's all heart. Okay? So we're moving away from, I need to be in a relationship, I need to be with someone every day, or even just like this obsession of having to be something for the sake of being loved, you're moving away from that. You know why? Because your angels with the whispers card here, they're saying, listen, we are whispering guidance. Because the person that you're going to end up with, I promise you, is going to be someone who's going to hold space for compassion. They're going to see you as a very colorful and creative person. It's not gonna be about status and who you are. It's gonna be about your heart. This is what you're starting to see. Abundance in love is not quality. We choose who's gonna enter our sacred space, right? If you're letting everybody kind of trample in your home, if you open the door to everybody, it's not sacred, right? We got to be choosy. Choose it, choose it, choose it, choose it. What's that song, you guys? Who sings that? I just have my playlist going. I don't even notice. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going. So singles in love for pile three. Yes. There's an activation here of, yes, higher consciousness. The higher conscious kind of love. My ancestors really love this deck. They really love this deck. <laughs> so look at this. A lot of you guys are going to come into union with a twin flame where you're coming into union with a soulmate. And there's, there's a divine love. This is why your guides are showing you the way. Because some of you, you cannot. It's like they, do not, they don't want you to waste your love on just anybody. Um, I remember... My brother had told me once, um, oh, be careful with your heart, you know, because you get to a point where you start to kind of give up after a while of being hurt so much. And I, I honestly, I never realized that. And as a Leo, Leo's son, 
you know, I'm, I'm like, how can anyone ever give up on love or how can anyone, you know, have a limitation on love? And, you know, after a few years of dating the wrong people, you really start feeling the effects of, wow, I feel like I'm closing my heart here, you know? So this is a lesson for you. This is why I'm bringing it up, okay? Your heart has a limit, and I had no idea in my early 20s. So I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to fall in love with everybody because I love everybody, and that's cool. But, I, you know, boundary is the thing. Having boundaries, it's really a thing, you guys. So the flow, it's like you're really saving yourself for an experience that, that's not just going to minimize you. It's not going to just bring you here. It's actually going to help you grow. It's going to you know, be, bring abundance. It's going to bring a different kind of love where it's going to help you feel. It's going to help you feel. It's not going to just be the gift of the gab, right? So let's see. I want you guys to know that you do not need to be anybody else but yourself in love because I'm channeling kind of a deficiency of needing to compare or needing to be this, needing to be that. You do not need to be anyone but yourself because the chariot here reminds you that you are very confident, that you have everything you need right in front of you. This connection is going to take off pretty quickly, you guys. I want to say around May or April for some of you. It, it's going to feel very fast. Okay? So there might be a proposition here of some long-term connections, like a marriage, an engagement, a move-in. Okay. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We have a very deep earth, earth energy here. Some of you are going to end up with a Capricorn, okay? Maybe two Earth elements here. A Leo. I'm getting a Sag. I'm also getting a Virgo. Wow, you guys, this is really beautiful. There's, it's like a transformative experience in terms of what you're bringing to the table. Some of you are just going to decide to be more in your feminine. That's what the lovers is about. You're embracing a side of your femininity or your masculinity that you want. Instead of chasing after love, maybe you're going to sit back and you're going to let someone come to you and say, well, I need you to show me why we're good together, right? So there's a duality or you're, you're, you're kind of adapting to a different vibe is what I'm getting in love to attract it and I like what I see so far for you so singles in love this is incredible you guys oh my gosh some of you I have to just say you are not going to expect this love when it comes in this is from for some, very strong Aries. This person has strong Aries placements or Libra placements. And we have the Four of Swords. We have the Tower in Reverse. We have Judgment and Eight of Wands. Fast, fast changes. This person is going to change for you. I don't, I don't like to say that because I believe we change for ourselves. But what I see here is someone who is incredibly determined to make it work with you. And it could be a twin flame, you guys, but I'm getting somebody who is the eight of wands. They're coming in fast. They're coming in with a lot of power and they're saying, I know what I want. Okay. During this time around May, you're going to have a decisive energy come towards you. The tower in reverse is saying you have to let go of someone from the past before you can invite someone new. Okay. Some of you guys have been holding on to maybe a water sign, and this water sign is no longer maybe benefiting your growth, but there's a need to hold on to this identity to make you feel comfortable. And what I see here is someone is going to come in who's going to show you why they feel so confident about you. You have to be ready for it. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Nine of Wands. You are going to deal with somebody who has some serious strength, inner and outer strength, okay? They, there's some PTSD here. There's maybe some trauma, but they want to grow with you. By the summer or around, I want to say, latest September, 
they are going, mm, okay, put a ring on it. Yes, they are. Yes, they are, hunty. They are not going to hesitate. So you guys got to get ready for this. So what is your advice on manifesting love if you are a single and want to manifest? Three of wands in reverse. Okay. Don't wait for things that are not manifesting quickly. Okay. So if someone is, you know, they're not really interested or they're not showing interest, they're not really pursuing. Mm. There's a saying like you got to, I, I think you guys, I think it's Maya Angelou. You got to bring something worth, worth having or something like that. I don't know who that is, but it, it really hit home with me. Like, what are you bringing to the table? It could be collaborative. It could be equal, you know, but don't wait for something that it's like this whole, like, leave you on red, leave you on a stagnant boat by yourself they're like okay I'm gonna put you here uh, tread some water while I figure it out over here like that isn't love and that's not someone who's decisive about you so your advice to manifest is to not wait don't waste your energy on people who are not sure five of swords in reverse in order to manifest clearly you have to open your heart and you have to get rid of your resentment that means all men are the same All women are the same. <laughs> we are becoming incredibly toxic. <laughs> all of us as a collective. I'm including myself because, honey, trust me, we all have our stuff. But what, what you know, and I, and I hope you guys take that well because I'm just being very trans, transparent here. Um, we cannot invite a manifestation of love when we are holding grudges. What we're going to invite are lessons to help us heal. So if you're saying, I want to meet the one, I want to get married, I want to find the person, you have to invite it from your state of grace first. Pure intention, pure heart. So we have the Four of Cups. Manifesting love. Sometimes we have to meditate on the offers that we have. Take your time. Manifesting means intention. Put intention into it, you guys. Spend some time by the water. You guys are ruled by the water elements, so you guys like to flow. You guys like to feel your energy. So with the Four of Cups here in regards to manifesting, allow it. Allow it to meditate. So think about what you want and then make sure you feel it write it down and start feeling it so you can attract it let's get one more for you how can you manifest it hmm <laughs> spirituality Believing in yourself. What is your... So knowing your spiritual beliefs and knowing your limits. Knowing your, your own boundaries. Right? The Hierophant. I love the Hierophant. Super powerful. You are the doctrine. You are the teacher. You are the person. You know your spiritual beliefs. So in order to manifest it, this could also say, you know, practice what you believe in and put it into the material realm. Okay, teach it, teach it. So meaning, um, you know, I believe in celibacy until I find someone that I feel is worthy of my body, right? That's putting my spiritual beliefs into practice. That's what this is. Or I believe in taking my time before I give myself to somebody. That's the higher fun. Take it slow, you guys. You got this. Love you. Bye.